Hey everybody, welcome back to RPG Imaginings. This book for Mongoose Traveler is probably one of the best source books I have ever read for a role-playing game. And I don't say that lightly because I'm a pretty strong critic of source books. Um, there are things that I really like about source books, um, things that I don't. Um, and my plan for the end of last year and now into this year um, has been to uh, do videos about my favorite source books for various genres. Um, this is definitely making the list, but I thought that uh, since this was recently released for Mongoose Traveler a couple of months ago, I thought I'd go ahead and do an overview of this book right now. Um, many of these books are also called splat books. And uh, the reason for that has to do with um, in the early days of um, World of Darkness and Vampire, um, someone had put an asterisk uh, after the name book uh, in those lines to indicate that, you know, there were a wide variety of different books that are were each themed in a different way. And so because of that asterisk, uh, the term splat book uh came into being. I understand that some of you hate the term splat book. That's fine. Please don't at me at the comments. I understand that you don't like it, but for informational purposes, I'm just letting people who may be new to role-playing games understand how veterans of the hobby talk about these things. So whether you use the term splat book or source book, the Imperial Navy for Mongoose Traveler is one of the best that I have ever read. This book contains so much information about what the culture and guidelines and regulations are like for the Navy as it exists in the Third Imperium that you could run an entire campaign just based off of the interactions on a military vessel. No doubt in my mind. Um, so before we actually get into it, let's take a look at the, the back of the book. You can see that this has like the uh, shiny filigree uh, that has um, been more common for um, specific special source books that Mongoose Traveler has put out. Um, so Traveler, the Imperial Navy, without its senior service, the Third Imperium would not exist. The Navy is entwined in the politics and economics of the Imperium, a training ground for the great nobility, and a route to social advancement for the general populace. The Imperial Navy details this massive force from the great fleets down to a band of new recruits. How are the sector and subsector fleets organized, commanded, and provided with warships? How would the Imperium... How would the Imperium would fight, okay, that should have been corrected, and win an interstellar war? How is the starship crew organized? What is the underlying design philosophy of Imperial warships? How do major ships and their escorts interact? How would the old Expanses fleet respond to renewed conflict with the Soleimani Confederation? The Imperial Navy has the answers. And folks, this book does have the answers. This is a book that is so dense with information I honestly couldn't believe it when I first read it. Um, now, I've really been interested for a long time in space naval engagements. Um, the history of this, you know, this starts with the boomers. I am not a boomer myself. Um, I'm a, a late Xer. Um, but, you know, post-World War II, people became very interested in naval operations because the war in the Pacific was such a significant part of the war, not to say that the war in the Atlantic wasn't as well. So people became really interested in how navies operate. For a lot of people, it was um, from personal experience. They were in the Navy during the war or subsequent wars. And... Um, the logistics of that are really interesting for anybody who likes logistics. And I am a huge fan of logistics in all of its forms because that is a huge component of what I do as an educator. I have to have all my T's crossed and all of my I's dotted in order to be successful in my job. And that's also true of running a giant vessel. Um, we could liken it, I think, arguably to running any sort of building or organization that, that the, the leadership is dependent upon a chain of command, connections between all the units, communication 
information, and this can be really challenging. So right off the bat in this book, we get an understanding of what the peacetime fleet structure is like for the Imperial Navy, that uh, there is the domain uh, fleet that is technically under the command of the Archduke of the Domain, the Emperor, um, uh, or the Emperor followed by the Archduke of a Domain, then sector fleets, subsector fleets, and system flotillas or squadrons. Um, there's a lengthy chapter here about the historical perspective and how prior wars had influenced uh, tactics and strategy within the Navy. And then we go into what the role of the Navy is and the, the techniques that are used. Um, one of the chiefest amongst them being presence, like just being present in a location, showing the flag, so to speak, is a significant component of what the Navy does, but they also have connections to internal security, diplomacy, protection of commerce, intervention. Um, and then we get into what fighting in interstellar war is like. Um, this is so information rich covering so many different components of how naval forces intertwine with commerce, daily living culture, um, then we have a nice chapter on organization of the Imperial Navy, which is great because every different science fiction setting is going to have different organization uh, within its Navy if we're talking about spaceships. And so this details it down to the last individual for the third Imperium, um, talks about all of the reserve categories, the reserve uh, fleets, what happens when they mothball a ship um, or bring a ship out of retirement, um, how they organize fleets, um, what the responsibilities are of particular fleets during peacetime and during war. Then we have a chapter on commanding the fleets, how the admiralty is organized, how squadrons are set up, how assets are distributed, how naval bases function. And what you can do or not do and what resources you can or cannot get at a naval base. There are a couple of um, Imperial Navy scenarios for Mongoose Traveler as well. And so definitely check those out. They give a really good idea. I'll, I'll feature them at some point on the channel. They do give a really good idea of how you use the information in this book to run a successful scenario or campaign just focus on the Navy. Um, then we get details on different ships and what their roles are, um, how they are maintained, and how crews are cycled throughout them. Um what their different roles are in war and peacetime and then naval operations. Okay. Uh, what is the chain of command? How are orders distributed? How is intelligence gathered? We get a chapter on shipboard operations, what the different branches do within a ship, the different roles aboard a ship, including the different officer sections and then the crew section. Uh, what the specific chain is, of command is and command procedures. The beauty of this source book is that although this is specifically keyed to the Third Imperium, this information could definitely be used for any naval role-playing game. It would probably fit a lot better for uh, science fiction, far future, but I think that this would work, honestly, with the Age of Sail as well, or even for modern uh, naval operations. Now, obviously, there would be some key differences. This book is authored by um, MJ Doherty of Mongoose, okay, Matt Doherty, and edited by him as well. Um, this book just makes me want to know what Matt did before he was involved with Traveler, because either he is a superb researcher or he was in the Navy himself. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Um, but this book is really well researched. Um, we have a chapter on ship handling. So what are the jump procedures? How are all weapon systems coordinated, 
coordinated. There's a separate chapter just on tactics and how different tactics apply in different situations. And we get some really interesting diagrams here about how ships would engage each other, how flotillas would engage each other, how entire fleets would engage each other, which I, as someone who cut his teeth on the Star Wars role-playing game, Wedge Star Wars, this was all information that like existed in the Rebellion Era source book, and that's one of the things that I loved in the Rebellion Era source book, but it was not presented in this amount of detail. This is like everything that I wish the Star Wars uh, Rebellion Rebel Alliance source book was that it ended up not being. Um, there's info on equipment aboard the ship, as well as how different weapon systems uh, are organized, maintained, um, executed, different vac suits that you would use. And so this is an example of something that really makes this book campaign worthy. I would argue that this is not just a source book. This is a sandbox as well. Um, personnel, personal weaponry that would exist aboard Navy ships. Um yeah. Um, what is going on with enlisted ranks? The difference between space hands and petty officers, junior officers, field grade officers, and then flag officers and their uniforms. Um, how the reserves work, how people are promoted, commissioned, recruited. Like it's all in here. And it's such a thing of beauty. How would you do advanced training? What are other routes that you can do to get into the Navy? What is the what is it like being in the Navy and having a Navy family? What are the specialist services? So much detail. How are individuals who perform exceptional acts rewarded? What are the medals? What happens when you leave the service? And I mean, leaving the service covers everything from being honorably to dishonorably discharged. What are procedures in the Navy? Orders, naval discipline. And then there's a section here about the old expanses sector fleet and a deep dive into basically just one subsector, uh, sorry, one sector and how each of the subsectors within it what sort of the strategy is behind defending this sector, which is located really close to the Soleimani Confederation? How are the fleets organized? What are some of the uh, particular exceptions or political situations with different fleets? Then the Soskyer subsector fleet, which is the one that borders right up against the border with uh, the Soleimani Confederation what is that fleet like? And then finally, the book wraps out with the Tigris class dreadnought, which is a primary showing of the flag vessel for the Imperial Navy. But it also goes into detail about what's unique about maintaining the Tigris dreadnought in terms of deployment, its construction, all of its primary components. We get this lovely map of the big picture of the interior, and then there will be some secondary maps here later on, how it's armed, uh, the standard information for high guard for uh, a vessel, but then, you know, individual decks also get some floor plans as well. And then I think that this is a really cool addition as well. We get like a blueprint of the spinal mount. And I mean, this is a scenario all in itself. I think that you could use as part. Um, here's the uh, the blueprints for the jump drive for the Tigris. Um, this is just such a full featured book. Um, I absolutely love it. I've read it cover to cover, and I I enjoyed every second that I that I wrote it. Um, it took me a couple months to read it because I'm sort of in the like read a couple pages per night sort of. Uh, school of doing role playing reading, but I just wanted to share this book with with y'all because uh, if you like um, naval role playing, 
This is the single best source book for naval role playing, whether science fiction role playing or age of sail that I have ever read. And I'm not saying that there aren't other contenders out there that, that I may not know about. There may very well be. So if you know of a great naval space book, naval source book out there, please drop it in the comments. Okay. But the Imperial Naval, uh, the Imperial Naval, I got this. I can do this. Okay. The Imperial Navy for Mongoose Traveler is spectacular. Um, if you like naval role playing and are interested in running scenarios related to the Navy and really fleshing them out, really adding some authenticity to your games is what this particular source book is really about because you can place very strong cultural structures around everything that you are doing within a scenario and really make the scenario come alive. Um, and you could also do that even more with a campaign. You can organize an entire campaign around this. And so Mongoose, spectacular job. This is one of my favorite source books of all time. Um, now, I have more Traveler coming up. Um, I purchased this one on my own, but Mongoose and uh, Matt Doherty was gracious enough or Matt, sorry, Matt Sprague was gracious enough to send me a copy of the world builders handbook, which I had been highly anticipating the world book world builders handbook was released in January and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, I've been pretty busy this semester, um, as an instructor at a university, but, um, world builders handbook will be coming up soon as well. Also very soon, um, I am getting DCC Dark Tower, hopefully in the mail today. So later today or tomorrow, you might see an unboxing of Dark Tower for Dungeon Crawl Classics. And so lots of cool stuff coming up on the channel. Thanks so much for watching RPG Imaginings. Have a great day, everybody.